And I do believe that even those among you who will not vote for this today would acknowledge that this is a much better bill. Chicago Tribune and other newspapers around the state of Illinois have said that in their endorsements of the bill. So today we have a bill that's titled The Compassionate Use of Medical Cannabis. The Compassionate Use of Medical Cannabis to help people who need a product to live a quality life. The person that can't get out of bed because they're too doped up on morphine or Oxycontin. The person that can't take care of their kids because of that. The person that can't work because of that. The person that needs a little help from us. The help that a doctor would like to provide but is not allowed to provide under the statutes of the state of Illinois. So this is a bill that many more than 60 of you would tell me privately that you hope I pass. Many more than 60 of you have told me you hope the bill will pass. But not all of you that told me the bill would pass are prepared to vote for it today. And I am asking you to take your heels out of the sand you've dug them into and just listen. Just listen. So despite newspaper endorsements of this bill, and despite polls in Illinois that show 70% of Illinoisans believe that we ought to be able to provide relief and a better quality of life to the people who live in the state of Illinois who need this help, some of you are unwilling to even vote your own conscience and your own convictions. And I ask you to give that some thought. The members of this House, even those that will vote no, are aware that this bill is not about drugs. It's not about marijuana. It's about health care. It's about health care for Jim Champion, who's in the gallery today, a disabled vet who many of you have met. He has been down here for months, years, visiting with you, talking to him about his MS, talking to you about what he needs to live a better life, talking to you about the fact that he just takes one or two puffs and his hands open up and his legs uncross and he's able to have a much better quality of his life. It's about Mike Graham who has been here many times, a man who's had heart attacks and strokes and two spinal fusions and has come to visit many of you to tell you that he would not be alive today if not for the relief that this product has given him. And there are so many others who are just seeking a better quality of life. Some, are, some have fatal diseases. The 75-year-old woman who's a colon cancer patient, who is terminal, who may want a cookie with marijuana in it, or a brownie, or get one puff of a cigarette to provide relief so she can enjoy the remaining years she has on this planet. Today, the drugs that people are taking sometimes don't work, they render them unable to do anything. And they're just simply looking for an alternative. This bill is substantially different from the bill that was defeated barely some months ago. Many of you have not yet even read the new bill. Some of you have said to me, I can't vote for a bill that allows someone to grow their own that is out of the bill. Here's what the bill does says that if your doctor believes you need to be able to use this product for relief of your symptoms, the doctor can give you a piece of paper along with your medical records, displaying that you have had a bona fide relationship with this doctor and that the doctor has tried other alternatives which don't work to provide the quality of life to you that you need. You can take these documents to the Department of Public Health who may or may not agree that you are eligible and qualified to get a license. If you get a license, you have to purchase this product from one of 59 dispensaries throughout the state. We picked 59, so there would be only one in each Senate district. 
and we require that these dispensaries be not for profit. We didn't want to make Illinois a marijuana profit center. We just want to be, find places where people can get the product they need. These not-for-profit organizations have to have everyone who works there and everyone who is an owner go through a criminal background check. Each dispensary must have computer equipment with a database that can be accessed by law enforcement. No one can buy more than a specified amount within a given period of time, and no one can own or stockpile more than that specific amount at any given time, so that nobody will be persuaded or even think about stockpiling it and selling it illegally. And by the way, there are very strong penalties for the illegal sale of medical cannabis under this bill. The bill also states that employers may have any rules they wish regarding the use of this product at the workplace or even prohibit it entirely. This is why the Illinois Chamber of Commerce is neutral on the bill. Employers may make any rules they wish. Landlords may make any rules they wish. If a landlord doesn't want somebody with this product on their premises, they can't be there. They can't use the product. Finally, maybe not finally, next, this bill has a three-year sunset. This bill doesn't ask you to, for all time, allow anyone who wants medical cannabis to have it. It doesn't say we're going to do this for the next hundred years. It says these are sick people, some who are dying, some who are in desperate pain. Let's try for three years what 16 other states have tried, but many of those other states have botched it. Let's give people three years under a highly regulated system to be able to get a product they need to improve their lives. The issue of law enforcement will come up. Let me tell you that the Federation of Police are neutral, the state police are neutral, and yes, the Illinois Chiefs of Police are opposed, but does anyone expect them not to be opposed? Police are never for making something legal that was illegal. And so I don't think that argument flies. The only argument that flies is that every one of us has people in our district who need this product. I'm asking you to consider this. Those of you who have told me you'll think about it, please do. One more comment, and then I'll take questions. As always happens on these controversial bills, many of you have said to me, I'll be there if you need me. I'll be number 58, I'll be number 59, I'll be number 60. But if you do that, we will never get there. If you have pledged to me your help, press that green button right away and the speaker will give you a few seconds to jump off the bill later if that's what you think you need to do. But don't be the 60th vote, be the first vote, please.